Welcome to EPG Potshala. Today we are going to discuss the module Judaism. This module is written by Tomer Petsiko of Center for Comparative Religion, Tel Aviv University. This module is a module in philosophy of religion. I am Raghu Raju from University of Hyderabad. Judaism is one of the older living faiths. It originated in the land of Israel. It's a consolidation of different groups of Semitic and Mesopotamian origins. They have a common patrilinear origin and they have a shared history and that's what makes them to form a single nation in Israel. The nascent nation of Israel was considered to have arrived at a unique covenant with the supreme god Jehovah. The covenant constitutes a special relation between the nation of Israel and Jehovah, promising it prosperity and proliferation on the condition that it would obey his divine commandments and will. Torah is their sacred text and it consists of first five books of the Hebrew Bible. Torah is about Jewish people and divine being. Divine being is considered as the only God and he is the creator of the universe and he is fundamentally transcendent and holy the other. Abraham is believed to be the first one to realize that there is only one true God and Abraham is said to have received personal orders from him, the God, the Supreme Being, to migrate to the land of Israel. In Judaism, a clear division between religion and politics. Religion belongs to the domain of priests and it is under their governance. It's an assembly of families descending from Moses' brother Aaron. And politics, on the other hand, is governed by the kings and generally there are no kings who are priests. So there is a demarcation between religion and politics. So what you have in Judaism is there is a supreme God, the only God, and who is Yehovah. There is the book, which is a sacred book called Torah. And there is the Israel, the nation which gave rise to this important living faith. And there, is, there are the chosen ones as the messengers of God. So God, according to Judaism, periodically chooses an Israelite usually a male, but sometimes occasionally a female, and interest him or her to convey his wishes to the people and the king. There are prophets who will comment on the future, denounce immoral things and sins of kings. In the year 586 BCE, the Babylonian Empire crushed the small kingdom and conquered its capital, Jerusalem, destroying its central temple. This was the retribution from God for the sins committed by people. As we know that Judaism believes that God rewards people who follow his commandments and punishes people who disobey them. The first century common era saw the birth of two significant religious traditions, namely Christianity and Rabbinical Judaism. Christianity believes that Jesus is the messenger of God. Rabbinical Judaism emphasizes dialogue between God and man, and it keeps the human effort at the center of religious life. It moved from eternal divinity to developing human being. This thus laid early foundations 
for humanism. The other important departure made by the rabbinical Judaism is it moved from a single holy place and a single temple to dispersed across many synagogues both within and outside the land of Israel. This is a, a significant move. It's a development or a departure from the earlier Judaism. At another difference between early Judaism and rabbinical Judaism is it moved from sacrificial worship to worship through prayer and obedience to hereditary. Its priestly religious elite is the important aspect of the earlier Judaism. Rabbinical Judaism brought another important element into it in the form of guidance by rabbis. Okay, so it is not only the priest who will play an important role in the religious activity of Jews, but also or they are guided by the rabbis. The oral Torah also comes to be replaced the written one. So we have now moved from the, the, uh, the written to the oral. God in Judaism is both personal and transcendent. Jehovah created the world and the world is not on its own. It is dependent on God and it is passive. So it is created by the God and then it doesn't have its own status. And God talks to people through his emissaries. But the point that we need to keep in mind here is, though the world is created by the God, in that sense it is passive, what is important in Judaism is, God gives human being freedom of will. Okay, this is a, a remarkable feature of Judaism. Like God is a creator of the world and world in that sense is passive. However, God created the, the world but the human beings who are created by God are given freedom of will. So human has to confirm, the job of human beings is to confirm to the divine order. Okay, so Torah which consists of God's direct word to Moses consists of five books. And these are very, very important, you know, uh, part of literature of the world and in, in general and um, you know, Judaism in particular. The first one is Genesis, the second one is Exodus, the third one is Leviticus, and the fourth one is Numbers, and the fifth one is Deuteronomy. Genesis is divided into two principal parts. The first part gives the history of mankind from the beginning down to the time of dispersion. The second part presents the early history of the Israel down to the death and burial of Joseph. The, it also covers the creation of the first man, which is Adam, and the creation of the first woman, which is Eve. God created the universe through a set plan. As I said, that universe or the God, a world that is created is passive. And God created it with a particular plan. And there is an order in the universe. God is benevolent. He is good. And he wants humanity to follow the path of his moral instructions. As I already mentioned, that he gave humanity a free will. Those who obey are good people. Those who, obey, who do not obey God are bad people. And he punished those who did not obey. The second part of the sacred text is Exodus. It tells of the departure of the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. Moses who led them towards the promised land. The third part of the book is Leviticus. It contains the Levitical laws and ritual precepts that everybody has to follow. The fourth one is Numbers. What is important to remember is that Numbers play an important part in Judaic ritual practices 
and are believed to be a means for understanding the divine. The last part is Deuteronomy. It consists chiefly of three discourses delivered by Moses shortly before his death. They are spoken to all Israelites in the plains of Moab in the 11th month of the last year of their wandering. The first discourse recapitulates the chief events of the last 40 years in the wilderness with earnest exhortations to obedience to the divine ordinances and warning against the danger of forsaking the God. The second discourse is in effect the body of the whole book. The first address is introductory to it. It contains practically a recapitulation of the law already given by God at Mount Sinai together with many admonitions and injunctions as to the course of conduct they were to follow when they were settled in Canaan. The concluding discourse relates almost wholly to a solemn sanctions of the law, the blessings to the obedience and the curse that would fall on those who disobey. God solemnly adjures them to adhere faithfully to the covenant God has made with them and so secure for themselves and their posterity the promised blessings. These addresses to the people are followed by what may be called three appendices and they are one, a song which God has commanded Moses to write, two, the blessings he pronounced on the separate tribe and three, the story of his death and burial written by some other hand, probably that of Joshua. Judaism places great emphasis on the condition and functioning of human body. The halakha is rich with laws concerning purity and defilement. It emphasizes ritualistic cleansing after an encounter with blood, salmon and corpse, the dead body before entering a holy place or reading Torah. The worshipping of the divine is central to Judaism. They keep in touch with divine through actions and words and not merely thoughts and beliefs. That's the most important thing. So actions and are more important than mere thoughts and beliefs. Jewish people are chosen people by God. God loved them in a unique way. God maintained an intimate relation with them and punished them when they are disloyal. The divine between the phenomenal and divine world is sought to be bridged in Judaism. In one of the famous of his prophecies, Isaiah tells of a time when, to quote, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the earlings together and the little child will lead them. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So this is the, the ultimate salvation which they look for. But in Judaism, the salvation is not individual. It is national, if not global. So there is a difference between, there is a slight difference between classical Judaism or the original Judaism and modern Judaism. With the rise of natural sciences and empirical paradigms and also rise of modern individualism, democracy, secularism, equality, there was an attempt to interpret Jewish religion, Judaism, along the lines of nat rational, formal and modern times. So there are attempts to secularize Judaism, there are attempts to reform Judaism with the advent of several of these new developments. So this makes Judaism not just as archaic religion but also sensitive to different kinds of modern developments. So there is this reformed Judaism that you have. So to summarize, what we have discussed today is the not only an old religious religion, but also a living religion. 
Okay, that is the remarkable thing about Judaism. It is not only old, but also a living faith. Now you have God, who is the creator, and he creates the world. And you have the nation called Israel, and there are people, and there is a, a particular kind of a covenant between people and God, and God is benevolent, but he, if he finds that people disobey him, deviate from his path, he will punish them and reward them if they are, you know, they, they obey uh, his things. The two important points that you find in the later Judaism is the importance given to human individualism, the importance given to human body, and then an attempt to be sensitive to the developments all over the place, particularly in science and in modern philosophy, and then attempt to, you know, come up with a restated Judaism, which is what is called as, you know, revived Judaism. Thank you.